In this video, I show you the portion of my workflow that deals with images that are, have great focus, but are either dark or have medium or high noise. And I basically use Lightroom Classic with DxO Pure Raw to deal with these type of images. And I can go from here to here. Hello amigos, this is Pablo Garcia, the engineer photographer. A few weeks ago, I released a video in which I show you in detail my workflow using Lightroom Classic and four of my favorite plugins. And I use plugins because even though Lightroom Classic is very good and has very good features, it is not perfect. And sometimes it needs a little help. And that's where plugins come in. I'll put the link to that video up here on the upper right and I'll also put it at the end of the video. The very first step in deciding what to do with an image is to analyze the image. And here we have this image of this beautiful Sun Hill crane that I took a couple of weeks ago at Bosque del Apache here in New Mexico where the cranes come to spend the winter. And I like the pose, I like the wings in the forward position, I like how the bird is just above the freezing water, there was some ice even. There are a couple of problems with this image. The first one is I took it at ISO 2000 and there's going to be quite a bit of noise. Not as much noise as before with older cameras, but there is a moderate amount of noise. The second one is the image is a little dark. I was shooting this image in aperture priority. I had a little bit of exposure compensation, but probably I could have used even one more stop of exposure compensation. I was shooting it with a Canon R5 with a lens EF500 at f4, and even at f4, I needed to go to ISO 2000. It, you know, we just didn't have a lot of light. But I really like the pose of this bird on the image. This image is medium noise and is a little bit dark. Now, just a quick refresher on my workflow. My workflow basically is analyze the image and there are three types of images. Images that have great focus or no little noise and good light, which clearly is not the image I just showed you. Images that have great focus and either medium, high noise or dark, which is the image I just showed you. Or images that the focus is a little off and any kind of noise or any kind of light, but basically primarily images that are soft. So for this center part, which we're going to use today, I use DxO Pure Raw 2 as a plugin in maintaining my raw workflow. Start with a raw image, send it to Pure Raw 2, and I get back a DNG. And after getting the DNG, then I can do my global edits in Lightroom Classic before going to the next part of the workflow which is analyzing what issues I need to fix, deciding if I can stay in Lightroom or if I need to go to Photoshop and basically finishing the image. And every so often I may decide to do something additional with the image using Nick color effects, or if I want to do a black and white conversion, I use Nick silver effects. But let's go back to Lightroom. Here is the image. This is a raw file from the Canon R5 I was telling you. And we have a couple of ways to go to the Excel Pure Raw. One way is under File. We can say Plugin Extras, Process with the Excel Pure Raw. And Lightroom is going to send the raw file. Even if you made any changes in Lightroom, it is going to send that original raw file. The second way, or sending the draw file is with the right button, click export, and you're going to see the Excel Pure Raw process with the Excel Pure Raw. This is also going to send the draw file. So both ways work. So we're going to do it this way. And Lightroom is going to send the draw file, it's going to open the Excel Pure Raw, happen very quickly. It tells me it is going to take about 12 seconds. You have the option to do the optical corrections here. And I really recommend using the optical corrections in DxO Pure Raw. I think they work better than the ones in Lightroom Classic. And all I have to do is, as already says, it's going to be a DNG image. It's going to be large file, anywhere from 126 to 205 uh, megabytes. 
and I click process. And it's going to take those, you know, 12 seconds. It's going to bring the image back into Lightroom. It's going to add it to a DXO subfolder in the main folder that you were working on. And automatically it's going to create a collection for that file. Now here is the file that came back from the Excel Pure Raw. I already moved it to the collection in which I'm working just to make it easy. So here is the original file and here is the one that came from the Excel. And if you notice the one from the Excel looks bright on the edges and dark on the center. And the issue and you just have to remember if you automatically are applying corrections in Lightroom is that DNG is interpreted as a raw file. So I had to make sure in the develop module under lens corrections that I turn off the corrections. I don't want corrections done in DXO and then a second set of corrections on top of it done by Lightroom. So I had to disable those corrections from Lightroom. And now I can compare, right? The original file and the file from DXO. It does look a little bit darker. I'm going to go to 100%, so I'm going to click on the DXO. This is the DXO clean file, no noise in the background. And here is the original. In the original, you can see a lot of noise in the background, noise on the bird, on the wings. And DXO did a great job on retaining detail while removing the noise from the image, whether it's the background or the bird. And what I really like about DxO is that it does a great job of removing noise from the dark areas. So now we can edit this image. As you saw in my workflow that I show you, is I'm going to do some global edits. And global edits will include, you know, cropping the image. I think for this one, a one by two aspect ratio is going to look very nice. Let me come in always want to give the bird a little more room ahead of it that are behind something like that turn off the lights in lightroom with the letter l and that's gonna be i think a nice crop now we need to adjust the light you can do it manually but i find myself now very often using the auto tone that does a very nice job sometimes you know, you have to tweak it. I'm going to give it a little bit more exposure. I'm looking primarily at the bird and also how it relates to the background. Something like that. Highlights looks good. Uh, whites maybe right there. And the blacks. Everything looks very nice. The auto also gave it a little bit of vibrance and I can adjust that. I don't want to go too much. And finally, you can also adjust the temperature. And I'm going to make this photo a little bit cooler, primarily because I want the background to be a little cooler. And then we can deal with a bird, the main subject, a little bit later. I'm going to cool it down a little bit. So those are my global adjustments. Now, here is a message from our sponsor, which is me. If you're liking this video, don't forget to subscribe and to give me a like. Let's move on. Now, after I do my global edits, then I try to decide if I need to go to Photoshop to do some fixes or if I can stay within Lightroom. And this photo has a couple of distractions. We had this black blob, it was probably a bird that was on the background, completely out of focus, and another one on this side. And, you know, for this type of distractions, the brush, the healing brush in Lightroom does a good job, right? We have the clone, which I hardly ever use. We have the healing and we have the new content aware. And content aware works well for small items like these ones. It doesn't work well for large things. And that's a big disappointment for me. For now, we'll stay with the heel and just make it a little bit bigger and Lightroom analyzes the image and tries to select an area that has similar texture and is going to blend it in. And it did a nice job. And this other one, the only thing you have to remember, this one is on the edge, but this is a cropped image. This blob continues to the left of the image on the original image. So you have to remember to go beyond the image, otherwise it's not going to do a good job. And here is selected an area I didn't like, but we can move it and we can make it manual. 
and there we got rid of those two distractions and we didn't have to go to Photoshop. Finally, we're going to do our local edits and the main subject is the bird. So we're going to use the mask. I'm going to select subject. The artificial intelligence system does a very good job of identifying the subject here. You see it. It's not perfect. There are some areas. I'm going to hold the space key and small. You see some areas here on the wings and also on the legs that the mask is covering that. So I'm going to go to the mask for the bird. I'm going to hit subtract. I'm going to select the brush. I had the auto mask turned on and I'm just going to subtract that. And I spend my time uh, going around because I want to have a good mask. And you know, you can spend more time than what I'm doing here, ensuring that you have a good mask like here between, you know, I did raise that one, uh, ensuring that you are removing all the parts of the mask that in which Lightroom didn't do a good job. And you know, that looks pretty good, this area right here. And now we have a good mask for the bird. Now, what do I want to do to this bird? Well, you have to remember three things. Our eyes are guided by light, color, and detail. Light, color, and detail. So I want to use light, and I'm going to, in the tone part of this mask, I may go a little bit higher on exposure, maybe not too high, something like that. It needs to blend well with the background. I'm still gonna reduce the blacks a little bit maybe give it additional highlights. In color, I'm going to warm up the bird a little bit. Remember, we cooled the image, but I want the bird to come back and be a little warmer. And that contrast of a little bit warmer bird, like if it's heated by the light from a warm sun with the cooler light in the background, I think makes it stand out even more. Saturation looks fine. In the presence part, I'm going to give it a little texture, not too much, and a little clarity. Again, you don't want to go too much, a little clarity. And finally, detail. I'm going to do my sharpening here instead of on the main panel in the develop. Hold the spacebar key. I'm going to click on the eye. And I find that if you use the XO Pure Raw, you typically are going to use a lower level of sharpness because you're getting a sharper image from the raw conversion that the XO does. So I'm just going to sharpen a bit. And something else that I'm noticing is this white part of the bird. This is a, all cranes have a white part right under the eye. It's way too bright and it doesn't look like we have any detail. So I'm going to create another mask with a brush. And I'm just going to select this area right here. And for that area, I'm going to go under tone and I'm going to reduce the highlights. I'm going to reduce the whites. And as you just try to adjust it to where you bring some of that detail back, maybe a, a little bit down on the exposure uh, and adjust the whites. The detail was there, but it, I want to be able to recover some of it. And now I go back, I'm going to close my mask. I'm done with those local adjustments with the mask. A couple other things I would like to do. If we do have some blue on the water or the icy water, I'm going to go to the HSL panel and on saturation, I'm just going to saturate the aqua and the blue channel a little bit, not much. And finally, I'm going to go under effects and give it a slight, you don't want to go too far, you want to give it a slight vignette. If you go too far, you can take a look at the miniature here on the upper left. If you can see the dark area in this miniature, you went too far. So I'm going to go back, you just have to wait for it to recalculate. And usually something around 9 to 12, 13 negative points on highlight priority works well. This is the completed image. Here we have the image on a larger screen and here is the before, the crop version. Before and after. And by using the XO Pure Raw, 
I think it gives you a lot of latitude to deal with images that have noise, moderate or high, or they're dark. I think DxO is just a great plugin for dealing with dark images. Well, amigos, that's everything. I leave you here with these two videos, the one that has my complete workflow, this other one, which is a little fun video with a musical slideshow from a recent trip to Alaska to photograph bald eagles. And as always, if you like in this content, don't forget to subscribe, send me your comments, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time.